Hi, my name is Ed Diaz and today we're going to learn how to chop samples using the Roland Phantom G. Okay, so first off, I am in a single mode just so we have a, a nice starting point. But I'm going to go immediately into my sample list, which is just to the left of the screen right here. So I'm going to go ahead and press sample and I'm going to press F1 sample list. So as you see, I have a bunch of different samples already queued up that uh, I've been kind of working on. And uh, if you're not sure what the sample sounds like, just go ahead and press the preview button and you can hear what it is. Okay? So I'm going to use this first one, Amp. As you remember, it sounds like this. So once I find the sample I want to use, after pressing F7, I press F8 for sample edit. Now this sample uh, was already previously done, so I already adjusted the start point and the end point. We already went in to modify and normalized it, and we also went in and truncated, all, truncated it already. So we got rid of all the excess that was on there. Also, before I even chopped, I went into parameters, adjusted how I wanted it to play back, plus I already figured out the BPM using the BPM calculator. So it's already set to 102.06. So this sample is ready to chop. So to chop a sample, it's very easy. All I have to do is press F3 Modify, and you see I have all these different choices, and look, there's chop right there, number 6. So I'll spin my dial wheel down to number 6. Press F8 Select. Okay, I get this screen, and it says Auto Chop, F6 Auto Chop. And if I spin the wheel, I see a couple of choices of chopping. One is by level, another is by beat, and another one is to divide it equally amongst the 16 pads. So I'm going to go ahead and do it by level, okay? And I can adjust the level anywhere between 1 and 10. And I'll just leave it on 6. So let's go ahead and press F8, Execute. And right now we see it chopped it, and it put the samples in the pads. Now this chop is what I, I like to call a preliminary chop. Because if I press the pads, there's 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven. So there's too many chops. So, see, this one starts right number one. So I'm a cursor down. Hit number two. That's a good one, but look, it's a little bit off. And if I, if I want to zoom in, remember, all I have to do is press the cursor to the right, and I can zoom in. So you see it's a little bit off. So I'll go ahead and scoot it up a little bit. I'm hitting the number two pad. Now let's hit number three. That one's a little off. No problem. And so I'll just go through my samples very quickly, my chop, my preliminary chop, and get it all right on the money. Okay, so doing that real fast. And now, just about done. One more after this. So once I have it chopped, like I want, and remember, I went from the current, I just hit the pad to select which sample, then I went down to adjust, okay? Once it's how I want, all I got to do now is press F8, execute, and now it officially chops it. So press F7 for, oh, are you sure I am? Now it asks me, do I want to create a sample set? And this will save you time. If you want, it will create you a sample set, and you don't have to do this later. You can or cannot do this. So I'm going to go ahead and press Okay. So now if I were to exit, you see that it says create sample set. And remember, that check mark means, hey, something's different. So now if we look at my pads over here, there's all my, my samples that we've created. So if I wanted to save that sample set, I go into pad setting. And let me go back to the screen for you. Go back to pad setting, and you see there it is. So if you want to save the sample set, press F7 right, and then just name it what you want. I'm going to name mine Amp Sample Set, after the artist Amp Fiddler. And like I said, it's a great album. Check it out, and I think you really dig it. So I'm going to name mine Amp Sample Set, and press OK. So now that that has been done, I have a couple options within here. 
I can go ahead and adjust the levels of each individual pad, adjust whether on the panning whether it goes to left or to right, maybe have some go in reverse. So right now it's in forward. If I spin the wheel, I can put it in reverse. Just like that. I can also tell it how to trigger gate, which means it just hits it for as long as I hold it. Drum, it'll just keep it playing. And this will be better when we have like a, and I'll do another one so you can see it with a more uh, loop based thing. Uh, mute group. What this means is if these are on the same mute group and there happens to be 16, if they share the same number, they will not play at the same time. Now here's something that a lot of my people that are doing uh, messing with the sample pads complain to me. They go, hey Ed, the pads are a little mushy. Okay, What that is, is that the designers of the Phantom G made the pads touch sensitive. So if you, so if you play drums on there, sometimes that touch sensitivity is not a good thing because we don't always hit the pads at the same velocity every time. So if you want to adjust that, you can adjust that per pad, or if I already know I'm going to use this to do beats, I can go ahead and say Syst F1 system, come into, go down, go to pad velocity, and it's going to be set to real on yours at the house, and that's touch sensitivity. So I'll go ahead into my pad, and I'll spin it all the way to the right, and put it at 127. So no matter how hard I hit my pad, soft, medium, or hard, it'll always come out at that volume, 127. Once I have it like I want, just press F7 system right, and now it's done. My pads will always uh, be at the same loudness.